Hi, I'm Courtney. Welcome to my garden where today I'm excited to show you everything I've learned about growing strawberries at home and how I've saved a lot of money doing it. We're on year three of our strawberry patch right here and these are June bearing sequoia strawberries. And we planted these, like I said, three years ago. So they're starting to decline. That normally happens starting with year three. They rapidly decline production and they kind of go down to nothing. And that's because the plants, the mother plants, they just get tired and the crowns get big and woody and you can tell that there's a bunch of like dead undergrowth and the plants are just tired and worn out and ready to be completely torn out. What I normally do is I take the runners and I start a new strawberry patch every single year. And then the first year that I plant those new runners, I remove the blossoms so that the plants spend all of their energy on growing big healthy plants. And then the second year, you're gonna have a huge harvest. So if you do that every single year, essentially you have free strawberry plants every single year and a constant harvest every single year. This strawberry patch I've just been letting go because we're moving soon. The house is actually, as we speak, listed. So um, I haven't spent a lot of time and energy on anything in this strawberry patch. And when we move, obviously I'm gonna be taking runners with me and starting a new strawberry patch where we're living. So if you're not moving and you need to revitalize your strawberry patch and you don't really have room to start a whole new strawberry patch, what you can do is completely tear all of your strawberry plants out, save some runners to replant in that spot, and you can amend it with tons of compost and then replant your strawberry plants and start a whole new patch. And obviously you're gonna go one year without strawberries because you're gonna to wanna to remove the blossoms that first year, and then you're gonna have a great harvest the following year. But ideally you'd have a couple of spots so that you can kind of rotate your strawberry patch and then you know have a constant harvest. Strawberries really like a sandy loam, well-draining soil. And our soil here is red clay, it's absolutely terrible so I've never planted strawberry plants right in that. This patch right here there are four rows and we just built the rows up using the soil that we fill our raised beds with and we planted the strawberry plants in there and they have done great and if you side dress with compost every year then that's great. If you're thinking about fertilizing what I would recommend is having a soil test done and then you know exactly what you're working with and if you even need to fertilize. You can get a soil test done at your local university University Extension Office, you can send it in or drop it off and you'll get an email, a really detailed email, letting you know everything that's going on with your soil and then you can go from there as far as fertilizing goes. So these being June bearing strawberries, you get one big harvest that lasts probably about three to four weeks and then the plants are done for the season. But if you're growing ever bearing strawberries, you kind of have plants to snack on throughout the whole entire summer. And I've tried growing those in raised beds before and they're great, but the berries were just a little bit smaller. And I just like having one huge harvest just because of the way we eat them. I harvest them and I freeze them because every single day we have smoothies with strawberries in them. And so, um, instead of snacking on, you know, a few strawberries here and there every day throughout the whole summer, I just like having this huge harvest. But it depends on how you like to eat your strawberries. So when I harvest the strawberries, I take them right inside and I wash them and I remove the stems and then I freeze them in a bag and just, you know, pull them out daily to add to my smoothies. But if you're planning on enjoying them fresh, you can leave the stems on and then just wash them before you eat them and then they'll stay fresh longer in your refrigerator. So here's how I've saved a bunch of money growing my own strawberries throughout the year. Obviously growing your own, you know you're going to be saving money because if you've been to the grocery store and seen the price of strawberries, whether they're organic or non-organic ones, they're extremely expensive. The other day we were at the store and there is a one pound container of strawberries, organic ones, for eight dollars, which is so expensive. And I always buy organic strawberries because they're on the dirty dozen list and I just try to avoid chemicals in our food whenever I can. And I have a funny story to tell. My four-year-old, she would not eat store-bought strawberries and I thought, she, she just hates strawberries and that's fine. I gave her some of our garden strawberries to try and she ate them and she's like, these are amazing. We have to harvest more of these. So she'll eat the garden ones all day long, but she will not touch a store-bought strawberry. <laughs> so the flavor of garden strawberries is obviously priceless. It's just, just like anything that you grow in your garden. The flavor is so much better than the store-bought food. The other way you can absolutely save a lot of money on strawberries is by propagating your runners every single year. So you have free plants every 
every single year and then you rotate and then have your amazing crop every year. But if you keep doing that, you'll never have to buy strawberry plants again. So I thought you'd like to come along with me as I harvest out of this unruly strawberry patch here and I'll show you how many strawberries we're gonna get. I have no idea exactly how much is in here, but just looking in here and smelling, I can smell the sweet smell of strawberries and I can see plenty of red strawberries in here. So I'm pretty excited to harvest with you guys. Last night we had some rain, so I'm kind of going to expect some slug damage, but if there's a little bit of slug damage on the strawberry and I'll show you some of them, I just cut around it and eat the strawberry and it's just fine because I hate to waste the strawberries but I found the very best time to harvest strawberries is just before they're really ripe because the slugs go after the super ripe ones and if you harvest them right before they're really ripe they'll ripen inside just fine before you eat them actually that happens really quickly and you can see if you look at the strawberry patch if you let it go it will go absolutely crazy strawberry plants are pretty invasive they put out the runners these dune bearing ones and they will absolutely go nuts and take over your space. So when they're done producing, the very best thing to do is to tear it out so it doesn't completely take over and then you have tons of just dead space with older plants not producing anything. All right, so let's get harvesting and see what we've got in here. First strawberry, look at how beautiful that is. Again, these are Sequoia June bearing strawberries. So pretty, prettier than any strawberry you can get at the store, I must say. So if you look at this one right here, you can tell that it's not quite right, but it's pretty close. I'm definitely going to pick this one. There's no slug damage yet, but tomorrow or the next day, it's going to be super duper ripe and we risk slugs going after this one. Here's one right here that is perfect right now for eating and luckily there isn't any slug damage. So there we go. Here's one right here with slug damage and it's overripe. So I'm just gonna toss this one out. Look at this beautiful berry and you can see right there on the bottom that there is slug damage, but you know what? Look at how perfect the rest of this berry is. So I'm just gonna cut it off right at the bottom here and eat the rest of it. Here's another one. This one has slug damage pretty much all over it. So that one is probably gonna get tossed out because I don't see how I can cut the slug damage off of this one. But I wish I could have come out here and harvested this one a few days ago because it would have been perfect a few days ago. This one has a bunch of slug damage. You can see the yucky little slugs on there. So this one's getting tossed out. This is an absolutely perfect berry, no slug damage, another perfect one. So when you grow organic berries, you're gonna get some smaller ones and some slightly deformed ones, but they absolutely taste delicious. So they're still just fine.
All right, guys, I'm gonna take a break because it's really hot outside and I've only harvested one side of one of these rows and look at all these beautiful strawberries that we just harvested. You can imagine how much these would cost at the store. I haven't even weighed these, but you can just see how many there are in this basket. And that's just one side of one of these rows. And my plan is to come back out here and harvest all of the rest of the berries that are out here right now before they are overripe. So I'm really excited to get these inside and clean them up and freeze them because these are gonna be some amazing smoothies. But of course, we're gonna enjoy lots of them fresh too. It's just such a treat growing your own strawberries. And if you haven't tried it, I would definitely recommend it. You can also grow them in containers. I haven't tried them in containers except for the little alpine berries, the little ones that you snack on but all of the rest of my strawberry experience is growing in raised beds or making a patch of raised rows like this. All right, back out here to continue harvesting the strawberries and it's a little bit cooler outside. And if I haven't convinced you to grow strawberries yet, I hope I can by the end of this video. Ooh, look at this yummy one. Ooh, this looks yummy. Ooh. Mm. These ones are hidden in here. We're all done harvesting and if I were to guess, I think we'll probably have maybe three or four more harvests out of these rows right here because I see a lot of good sized green berries. I don't even know how many pounds this is, but look at all these beautiful strawberries. Oh, I can really lift this actually. Look at all of these gorgeous strawberries, you guys. I don't know, I would say maybe like 30 pounds of strawberries maybe, maybe even 40 pounds. That's a lot of strawberries. You can do the math and figure out how much that would cost at the store, but I would say these are priceless strawberries because the flavor is amazing. If you've never had garden strawberries before, I hope that you'll try to grow them because they're just so much fun to grow and they're beautiful and the flavor is absolutely amazing.